I'm back with a new video. And for today's video, I'm going to be doing a book review. And the book I'm going to be reviewing is The Red Pyramid by Rick Riordan. I think he, that's how you say his name, Riordan. I've heard other people say it, Riordan. But I'm going to go with Riordan. I don't know if it's right or not. You can let me know if it is. But that's how I say it for this video anyway. This book is my very first Rick Riordan book, and I really, really liked it. I have seen his other books, like the Percy Jackson series and the Heroes of Olympus, and I wasn't really interested in reading them. I want to read them, but they're not something that's like on the top of my TBR shelf or to be read books, and I, I don't know, I was never really like drawn to Percy Jackson to really read it but I know he has other ones like he has a book with Norse mythology which I want to read also because that one sounds like it may be good and I wanted to read this one which is his Egyptian mythology trilogy and The Red Pyramid is the first book in this trilogy and I absolutely loved it I did so right now I'm going to give a little bit of a synopsis. So the book is about a brother and a sister who have been separated for six years and they only see each other once or twice throughout the year. Um, the, the sister, Sadie, she lives in England with the grandparents where she gets to go to school and have friends and everything. The brother, Carter, lives with his father and he travels around with his father who is a famous Egyptologist and he goes around to dig sites and he travels all around. And the funny thing is, each sibling wants what the other one has. So one night when Carter and his father go to see his sister and to pick her up to spend some time with her, the father brings them to the British Museum where he does a spell and he releases the five major gods of Egypt. Then the bad god, Set, takes the father and now it's up to Sadie and Carter to find their father and save him stop set from taking over the world and coming to deal with the fact that they are magicians and this is a middle grade book and Sadie is I think 12 years old and Carter is 14 so that's the main thing this book is told by Sadie and Carter chapter 1 chapter 2 are by Carter chapter 3 and chapter 4 are by Sadie chapter Five, six is Carter, seven, eight is Sadie, and it goes on until the book ends. So each each character gets two consecutive chapters, and then it goes to the next one's point of view. So now I'm going to go a little bit into the characters. I really liked Carter. I thought that he was very intelligent, and he was slow about things, but he was very smart. He knew a lot about ancient Egypt, obviously, because he walked around with his father, so he was like kind of like a walking dictionary or what Sadie calls um, the walking Wikipedia. Carter was very sweet. He cares a lot for his sister. He cares about the world. He wants to stop Set from taking over the world and he is able to control his magical abilities a lot more than Sadie is. Like he's kind of like natural at it. He's kind of natural at controlling it and being able to use it a lot better than Sadie is. Carter is very serious and he's very to the point and he doesn't really use a lot of sarcasm or anything like that but and he's just really a nice guy now on to Sadie she was hilarious I loved her she's spunky she has such an attitude she's very sarcastic she makes fun of Carter all the time and she's just like has such a huge personality she struggles with the magical side of her abilities and she is more of a person to act on what she thinks instead of Carter who's more like a thinker and like a planner and he wants to make sure they go in with the plan. Sadie will just go in and do whatever like off the top of her head. Sadie also has some issues that she has to deal with. Some major issues where she plays a big part in stopping set and she has to make some hard decisions which is a lot for a 12 year old. Like she gets upset but then she takes it and she does what she has to do which is really something for like a 12 year old because I don't think that I could have made any of the decisions that she made when I was 12. The next character I'm going to talk about is Bast, and that is the Egyptian goddess of cats. And she is Sadie's protector. And Bast is a prominent character in this series because she, she is with Sadie and Carter throughout the whole journey. She comes in and out, but she's mostly the one that's with them. And she's hilarious. She's so good at fighting. She acts so much like a cat. 
she comes to care for both of them and she will do anything to protect them and she's just a character that you get to know and you get to love and you don't want anything bad to happen to them and you just want her to be around Sadie and Carter because not only is she a goddess but she can protect them and I just really really liked her as a character. I really love the whole mythology part of this book because the, the gods are active characters in the book. Set is the bad guy and he's the one who's trying to end the world and become ruler of the world. Isis also plays a huge part in it and so does Horus and you kind of get their voices into the story. I'm not going to tell you how but you hear their voices in the story and they're funny like Horus is like He's the god of battle, I think, and war, so he's, like, straight to the point. He always wants to go fight, and he wants to, like, he just gets angry and wants to go fight, and he thinks that he could beat anybody when he really can't. And Isis is kind of, like, a petty person at times, and it's just really funny. And she's also sarcastic. I really like the magic and the way the magic worked. In the story, each magician gets their own wand and staff and a whole magic kit for themselves. The way they do magic is so cool, is like they will say an Egyptian word and then the hieroglyphic for that word will come out and do the magic. So it's like they'll point their staff and say an Egyptian word or an Egyptian spell and the hieroglyphic will come up and then like as it fades away, the magic happens. So I thought that that was really, really cool. And there's a lot of hieroglyphics in the book. When a spell is being said, usually the hieroglyphic will follow. So you can see what the actual hieroglyphic looks like. So I really like that that was incorporated into the book. There is a lot of action scenes. Um, there's a lot of fights. There's a lot of battles. There's a lot, there's a lot of Egyptian mythological monsters in this book. And some of the gods that Sadie and Carter have to fight against, as well as Bast has to fight against to save them. There are lots of other gods, minor gods, in there. And the way that they show, like, there's a scorpion god who turns, who has, like, millions of scorpions crawling off of her. And a lot of the gods are also portrayed as having human bodies but their heads are different like Horace's head is a falcon and there's a crocodile god who's has the body of a man but his head is a crocodile so there's a lot of those gods in there and they're it's really cool to read about the descriptions and their different powers and what they're gods and goddesses of so I thought that that was really really cool the magic was awesome also and each magician in this story has their own god that they follow and has their own kind of niche of magic. Some are diviners, some can see the future. A magician is supposed to be well-rounded and, and be able to at least do some of the magic from the other categories, but they all have their one specific category and their one specific god that they go to. And I just thought that that was so awesome. So. While Katie is good at reading hieroglyphics and spells like that, she's not really that good at combat magic. While Carter is good at com combat magic, but he's not able to read hieroglyphics and sometimes he can't do even simple spells. So it's just really, really cool the way the magic works. Um, I love the settings. They travel all over the world. They go to England, they go to Paris, they go to the United States, they go to like seven different states. They go to the underworld also, so it's not just like real places. They go to like the underworld of the Egyptian mythology, so they travel to like fantasy places, and it's awesome the way that everything is described. There is a small romance in the book between Carter and another magician, but it's not really that big. Like, you could tell that they like each other and everything, but it's not, that's not the main focus of the book. The main focus is them trying to find their dad and stop Set. The one thing that I do have to say that I disliked about this book was that it was told in the same way that Writers by the Veronica Rossi was told, and I mentioned that in that um, video also, about that I didn't like how it was told through a recording, so it was told through, like, flashbacks. So the book starts with Carter saying that this is a recording and they're going to tell you their story. So it's kind of like them remembering and everything and I'm not really a big fan of that kind of storytelling but I was able to overlook it because the rest of the book was so good 
But the thing that I did like about the way that the book was told was in the beginning, Rick Riordan is saying that he just got this recording from somebody and he's just writing it down as it's as he's listening to it. And at the end of the book, he says that the end of the recordings is where the recording stops. And if and if future recordings come to him, he will write them out also. So it's, he's kind of like saying that he didn't create this book. He's, he's trying to say that he's just writing it from the recording, which I thought was pretty cool and pretty clever. So obviously, I gave this book a 5 out of 5 stars. I really liked it, and I really want to continue in this series and read the other two books in the trilogy. I don't know about the, his Percy Jackson, his Greek mythology and Roman mythology books are, but this one is awesome. So that's it for my review, and I hope you guys liked it. I'm sorry if it was a little rambly and all over the place. I think everybody should try and read this book, and even though it's like 500 pages, it goes so quick. It really does. Like, I read this book in like two and a half days because it's so engaging and it's so good. So everybody should, I think everybody should give it a try. So you can let me know down below if you read this book and what your thoughts were on it or if you plan on reading it also. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time with another video. Bye!